So I'm really excited to present this topic today in Singapore and it's really an honor to be in person at Hack in the Box again. So really like it. Last time was in Amsterdam. I'm, I'm really happy to enjoy the conference. Um, who am I? So I'm Thomas. You can see a picture of me here. Um, I'm focusing on embedded IoT security related technologies. So hacking IoT stuff, uh, reverse engineering embedded devices. And I was speaker on various conferences, um, like Hack in the Box, of course, and uh, ITSECX, which is a local conference in Austria. And I've also published several security advisories uh, regarding embedded devices, regarding IoT devices, also regarding printers. And uh, if you remember the keynote talk, um, all of the devices which you heard, their PLCs and so on, I like them because they are insecure. So the outline of my talk is um, just foundations. So baseline, so what uh, you have to know about um, Internet of Things uh, security stuff and also uh, digital twins. So a lot of stuff like that. Um, OT infrastructure and uh, typical OT security assessment. I'm trying to combine now um, digital twins operate, operating technology and uh, security vulnerability research all together in this talk and that's a bit challenging. Of course, uh, the construction of digital twins, a bit security testing. Uh, one thing, the security vulnerabilities are not published yet because the vendors um, take a bit more time to fix them, but those are really, really easy vulnerabilities. And if you are interested, you, you can find them too. That's not a problem. And of course, a short conclusion regarding uh, all those topics. So what is OT? Some of you might know. It's operational technology, like IT, which is informational technology. And um, you have a lot of uh, devices on a lot of levels in the OT um, environment that are RTUs, PLCs, HMIs, engineering stations, SCADA servers, historians, and so on. So a lot of devices. And um, some of those are IoT devices. You call them industrial Internet of Things if they are placed in such an operational technology network, of course. Can be IP cameras, printers, routers, and so on. You also have them uh, in operate, operating uh, technology um, environments. But um, if those are industrial routers, sensors, actuators, industrial environments, or maybe cameras which are um, observing a process uh, like melting uh, metal or whatever it may be, um, then it's of course called industrial Internet of Things. So the the border in between those two things is yeah not not really not really hard. And you have digital twins. And during this session, because there are a lot of uh, types of digital twins, during this session, digital twins are meant to be um, real. Um, it's li like a copy from an operating system, from a real device, because all of those things are computers, of course, um, which uh, is running like a real system. So you can start it, but you don't need the hardware. Sometimes digital twins are um, are just um, simulations of uh, processes. So that's the difference. So there are a lot of different definitions of digital twins. I also call them firmware digital twins because you're just copying the operating system of the device, the firmware uh, started or modified, started, and then it runs like a real firmware. Of course, you have about some implications, but... I will come to this later. So in the early days, um, OT was just uh, field pass technology, a bit mod bus, a bit profi bus, a bit can bus systems, which were cables just lying around in the, in the fab. And you connected those devices together and then you yeah, just send out your messages via this uh, bus technology. You had PLCs with uh, one programming interface, a COM port, um, like 
cables like this, you, you know, the, the DSOP and a few kilobits of memory sometimes. So it, it was really a small computer, really basic. And, um, supervision was implemented via analog technology. So maybe you know those, uh, big rooms where you had lamps, where you had, uh, some kind of networks, uh, everything really analog and the light was just uh, blinking if the process was failing or whatever. So supervision was really done in an analog way. Um, in early days, you had all those things, but nowadays it gets more complicated. You have Ethernet all around your fab, um, which is sometimes doing supervision of uh, whatever power, memory, sensors, actuators, and so on. Uh, you have manageable Ethernet switches all around the infrastructure, so on all, all those levels, so from level 0 to level uh, 4 and level 5, in the Perture model of the OT system. And you have also, because it's not complicated enough, you have also to add routers, firewalls, uh, to connect the IT world with the OT, so that you can uh, export data, that you can access from the IT to the OT, which is sometimes not a good idea, but it's... Um, constantly done by a lot of companies and you have a lot of peripheral devices um, the IIoT or the IoT. So far so good. What are the differences between IT and OT? From Also from a, a Pentester's perspective um, you have a lot of network bandwidth, you have a lot of business related information software time and so on in IT, so that's the traditional IT uh, system. If I, as a pen tester, walk into a company and do a penetration test, some of you might know, uh, in IT systems, you can have a lot of fun. It's really a lot, lot of fun to do uh, penetration tests. And yeah, usually mm, no processes, no physical processes are dependent on those IT systems. So if the server just reboots, then okay, some data is lost, but it reboots and it will work next time. If some client uh, will just um, yeah be be stuck, have denial of service because you are doing a, a scanning of the of a port scanning of the uh, device, then yeah, it's okay, just stuck and that's it. You can reboot it, no problem. In the OT world, you have not that much network traffic. You have a low bandwidth. You just need some signals to indicate whether a process is running, whether sensors or actuators are running, or just uh, communicate some, some signals in between, or to the SCADA server, or from SCADA server to the historian, and so on. But it's it's not that much. You have also uh, industrial-related information, so it's not really like, okay, uh, in the next few seconds, I want to trade whatever this stock it's like um, the sensor or the actuator says one or zero. So um, the motor is, or the, the engine is running or is not running, or the pump is doing its work or not. And uh, you have also hard real time. So if you are not getting the information of the current temperature, it may be too late in the next second. And other things, of course. So if, if a, a short system failure um, is proceeding, then maybe it's it it's too late because um, yeah, the process already uh, turns down your whole factory, and uh, you can do you can spend the next um, two weeks or more just to build up the process again to clean all the the yeah all the whatever it may be. So it can be. Uh, manufacturing of um, I don't know some some parts for for washing machines or it can be a bottling company or whatever um, you can spend a lot of time to to bring it up again and sometimes even months if it's a chemical factory because yeah then you have to clean a lot and the thing is upgrades are only are only coming during maintenance windows. And maintenance windows um, are not not really often in OT systems. Sometimes once a year, sometimes 
just one time in two years or in three years or whatever, uh, because the factor is, is really, really important. And for typical OT security assessments, you have to be careful. You can have to lock all your network traffic, what you are doing, because otherwise it may be, um, yeah, the, the OT, um, the, um, the, the, the guy who is, uh, who is doing the, the management of the whole OT, whole OT network, uh, is saying to you, okay, you have, um, broken that process and now we have to pay a lot of, a lot of money few thousands of dollars or whatever. And if you can say, no, I have locked my network traffic and it's not my fault, then of course that's fine because otherwise uh, you, yeah, <laughs> you have to pay all the, the money if you have no good insurance. And um, do not use automated security scanners for IT because those security scanners may just break everything. So I, I had uh, OT security assessments um, where I just uh, did a port scan, of course, during a maintenance window, so it was not the big problem, but um, about 200 PLCs were just rebooting at that moment. That's bad if it's uh, during the during the daily work, because then, yeah, it may break a lot. Uh, I have talked about the, the purchase model, so you can see um, some some kind of uh, purchase model in this figure. So that's also why, why I'm, I'm telling you about faking at level one, because level one is um, this section here. So PLCs, RDUs, and whatever. And you can see enterprise IT infrastructure, which is the IT world, um, is connected here at level four. So really a high level after the whole uh, OT uh, environment, which you can see here. And usually it's also separated by a firewall. And um, all the, the stuff which is here below is uh, the whole OT network infrastructure, which is composed by level 3, level 2, level 1, level 0. And sometimes there is some kind of level 3.5, which is the gateway to, to the IT. And uh, you can see there are a lot of devices here, engineering station, um, historian, application station, and so on. And here you have also your engineering station where you can program the PLCs, which is going down here to level one. So there are links in between, of course, because otherwise uh, you wouldn't be able to connect uh, those devices and you wouldn't be able to, to program them and do supervision. And the problem is sometimes our customers just... Um, don't do this kind of, um, of se um, separation between the levels on horizontal or on vertical or any way. And then you have all those devices in one big network, which is sometimes a real, really big problem. One of our customers um, had just one, one problem with one of his switches, which were broadcasting all information, all, all packets um, through the, the whole switch because we don't know. Maybe the, the switch table was um, flooded or, or not. We don't know. And then the whole OT network was uh, stuck, was just denial of service of the whole network. So it's not even a malicious attack. It was just failure. That's it. And for that case, it's, it's, it's really wise to do this kind of um, separation between those uh, levels. So how do we do um, OT security assessments? Pretty straightforward, so it's uh, like in an IT system, but um, you have to to be a bit carefully because it's like hard surgery and not like knocking on all doors in an apartment house. And yeah, it's a bit different, but the steps are the same. So information gathering, then uh, active testing, and afterwards reporting. So for information gathering, you can also use the the blueprints. So reviews of the network blueprints. You can uh, collect information about all the system, about the firmware, doing network sniffing, but you have to be careful. And um, for active testing, that's, yeah, that you have to be really careful. Um, I would, I would suggest to, either to, to do step by step tests. 
So just trying to access the web interfaces, then trying to access um, some some ports, but not trying all in an automated way. And um, it's also possible to use uh, Tenable OT. They have created uh, some kind of special scanning system, so like Nessus, but just for OT systems. But um, in the end, um, if something fails, then denial of service, destroyed devices, um, yeah, power supply, and even human life uh, can be can be put at risk. So, if there are issues, also in OT scanning software like Tenable, um, yeah, if some some issue arrive. Uh, arises, then you will have the problem as penetration tester. And uh, your customer will have the problem that uh, the process is just shut down and yeah, can be a, a real problem. So, so a possible solution for um, all those problems, because you can see it's, it, it can have a lot of implications, is to make a digital copy of the whole OT network. Of course, not of all 100% um, of the devices, but at least of, let's say, 70 or 60 or 80% of the devices. Because if you have a digital copy with digital twins, um, then you have the advantage that you can put, that you can do a real pen test on the digital copy and not on the OT system of your customer. So, if the device uh, will be shut down or just will be crash, whatever, for whatever reason um, that you are doing on the on the network interface, then yeah, it's not a problem because it's the digital copy. It's not the the real OT network, and such technique uh, would be some kind of virtual pen testing. So there are also vendors in the OT environment which are uh, using this as marketing password but um, I asked them and it's it's not really virtual pen testing it's just um, collecting uh, firmware firmware versions and collecting the the CVEs which have been published uh, yeah, of this firmware versions and you know if you are using virtualization so the digital twins, a digital copy of those um, of those devices, of those uh, infrastructure, then it always has a certain gap. So you will have a gap between the digital twin and the physical device because you cannot um, you cannot really copy all the the IOs. So if you have some relays or if you have some some signals going out and going in to the device, of course. It's digital. It's it's just a copy. It cannot simulate all all stuff like this, but you can emulate the firmware, and that's the the big advantage advantage. And you can also um, access um, via this Ethernet or Wi-Fi interface to the digital copy, which is really great. And of course, it's um, it's really difficult to do a digital copy of all those devices. I mean, that's, that's really, really, really a problem sometimes, but it still pays off if you're doing this because then you have the digital twin of the device and you don't have to break the whole OT network and uh, you don't have to pay a few, yeah, K or more, uh, for just uh, putting down uh, the operation of, of your vendor's um, fab. So how is it possible to create some uh, digital twin to construct um, all of this? So, of course, we have heard it today. You can extract the firmware, but you can also download the firmware from uh, the internet or from, from the vendor's website. Um, you have to analyze the firmware and prepare it for virtualization because sometimes it's not working out of the box. And um, then you have to, to start uh, the desired virtual way in, in virtualization environment uh, to create the digital twin. There are open source tools and you have to run the digital twin. Um, you can see a lot of tools here. There are more. There's also, uh, there are also derivations of those tools. But all in all, um, maybe you know some of those logos. You have Emux or Amix 
and Medusa, Chilling, and uh, Fermatine, where there's also a new version of this one or an extended version, which is um, called Firm AE. I think it's from a Korean university. And uh, you can see all of them, or most of them, are specialized to uh, creating digital twins or doing rehosting because it's always called in a different way uh, from Linux-based firmware. So if you if you look for emulation of some kind of real-time operating systems, of course, there are some tools out there, but they are not really easy to handle. And if you are not... Um, if you're not an expert or if you don't have any expertise um, regarding um, regarding this topic then it's it's really it's really hard um, to dig in there and it's it's really hard to do emulation of real-time operating system but all in all those tools are some of those which you can use uh, for creating digital twins there's also a gap also in, in those tools, of course, as I have mentioned before. On the physical device, you have the chipset, you have vulnerabilities sometimes in, um, in, in implementations of uh, drivers and, and so on, but uh, you cannot always emulate all of those chips and sometimes you will not find some vulnerabilities which may be present on the real device. You have IOs, Sometimes you cannot access, access to those IOs because they are not present on the emulated device. And uh, you have the emulated firmware. So all in all, um, virtualization of devices helps a lot to get uh, the idea, the big picture of the whole device and how it works. And um, that's really valuable. Even though sometimes you, can, you cannot um, emulate everything, but, some, but really often you get an idea how it works, how the processes are connected to, it, to each other. And uh, sometimes if you start the emulation, you will immediately see some strange port listening on, on the network interface. And sometimes it connects back to some kind of telnet listener. And then you know, okay, there is a backdoor. And uh, it happens really often. So I've mentioned it, Pro, you can do parallel tests, live debugging, and so on. But Con, you have a, lo a lot of uh, work, and you, you can put a lot of time into cloning the device. And it's not always possible for all OT devices, and it's also not really possible for 100%. But it's, um, it's, it's really nice if you are able to put a digital twin of your whole OT network. And uh, if you do pen testing just on this digital twin instead of the whole OT environment. So if you are doing security testing and if you are doing security testing on Linux-based machines... I guess you will know how to do a white box test. You, you will also know how to do a gray, gray box test because sometimes you don't have the source code of all the applications. And I have brought uh, some examples. So, um, yeah, because of the time, I will, not, I will not show everything, but that's not a problem. Um, you can see here two pictures. On the right-hand side, uh, it's the... It's the web interface of a running digital twin. Um, and on the left-hand side, you can see all the open ports. You can see the listeners. You can see the processes. You can see also um, the CPU info of the, of the running machine. And I can show you also a live emulation. So here is, I've used Medusa because it has a web interface and yeah, it's, it's really nice. You have two uh, running firmwares, so from two different vendors. And ports are also set for the serial port. Not for any any SSH, Telnet, or whatever listener. It's, it's really for a serial port of the device, of the digital twin. And I connected um, to the... It's, it's a bit slow because it's uh, via the mobile phone. Um, but I connected to the to the serial port of those devices, and 
for me, it's now possible to type those commands like if config, uh, like um, net stat, and uh, yeah, just just look um, which ports are open, which uh, processes are running uh, while using PS, for example, and um, I can also access to the web interface of those devices. So I'm connected via Wirecard. So that's a nice thing. Okay, I'm not that good in Chinese, to be honest. But um, that's, for example, a device from Delta Electronics. And if it loads in time, then you will be able to see the web interface of this OT device. And that's one part of a full digital twin from a full OT network. If you have multiple of those controllers, um, managed switches, routers, and so on, which are part of the industrial Internet of Things, which is part of the OT network, you can create a full, um, a full, or not a 100%, but for example, 70% uh, duplicate of your customer's network. And then you can um, you can pen test those devices instead of pen testing the real devices. And of course, you can do it with Medusa, you can do it with Fermadyne, you can do it with Armex. Um, all of them are based on uh, some kind of QEMO, on some kind of uh, build system, and all of them can be used uh, to, to create such emulations, such uh, virtualizations of embedded devices. And uh, with those te techniques, you're able to really to create a snapshot of the of the network and pen test it. And you can also see it, it works for a, a broad range of devices because a lot of devices are based on uh, Linux and that's the reason why it, it gets more and more easy um, to just uh, use this technique. So I guess it's, yeah, it's, it's really slow. So it's, it's via the, the, the mobile phone, via the hotspot and yeah, but Using this way, you can also do port scan. You can also use Nessus. You can use just any tool, and um, you don't have to, to lock all your network traffic. I mean, I would recommend to do it, but uh, you don't have to do it for reasons like uh, being su sued from the customer and paying a lot of money because you are breaking processes. And yeah, that's that's really nice. So I had some, some other uh, devices from... Red Lion from um, ProSoft from uh, Moxa, so that's that's a switch which um, also were emulated for seventy percent, and uh, that device was around ten thousand dollars, I guess. And I just downloaded the firmware and did a pen test on the running firmware, found vulnerabilities, and uh, yeah, just told them that they have vulnerabilities in their devices. And they also fixed those vulnerabilities in, I guess, six other device series uh, because they are using the same firmware base. And yeah, that's that's really nice if you catch a lot of them because then you have, you have um, helped to increase the security of a lot of OT networks. But uh, the backside of this is... The maintenance windows are just once a year, so they will install it maybe next year. Let's see. So a lot of uh, devices were tested via this technique, so by me and by my colleagues, and uh, currently pending are those uh, two examples which I have shown to you uh, right now. And sometimes you have the well-known reactions um, if you communicate those vulnerabilities to the vendors, which can be you no. Know, it's not there or just no reaction or an endless uh, ping pong process um, which goes to nowhere and sometimes and that's the special case for digital twins they say no it's your controlled environment so the best thing is just to not say that you have tested those vulnerabilities on digital twins because then the vendor will just say no that's not possible so to sum it up um, if you want uh, to do complete um, OT security assessments, it's always challenging. It's, it's really hard to not break anything. Um, if you're using digital twins, 
you can build a um, full clone and uh, you can use this technique um, to test IIoT, IoT or printers or whatever you want to test. And you would not harm any OT networks because you're just uh, testing a clone, you're testing a, a virtualization. And uh, you can also find really easy new vulnerabilities and communicate to the, them to the vendor without having the device, and that's that's uh, really nice. And yeah, there are also responsible or not responsible vendors, and you know that from for from uh, communicating vulnerabilities to them, but that's nothing new. So. Thanks for listening my presentation. And if you have any questions, I'm around for the next uh, day and, and for this day. And if you want to talk about digital twins, I'm highly interested. Just talk to me. And yeah, thank you.